Have you ever been to a fireworks show around July 4th or New Year's Day or New Year's Eve? A lot of people will have firework displays. And you enjoy the fireworks display. But what's neat about the fireworks display is that it's a build up. You know, they start out kind of small, maybe some of the small fireworks. They build up and get some larger fireworks, then they get multiple fireworks, and they start going off all at one time. But then what do you have? Everybody's waiting for it. When you know the fireworks show is getting to its end, the grand finale, everything goes off. Stars, multiple fireworks, booms, busting. I don't know, I'll call them the big bombers at the end where it's just so loud you got to cover your ears and just going and going and going. But the grand finale. Well, this morning I want to talk to you about our Lord and Savior. And we're going to talk about the grand finale. But before the grand finale, I want to talk to you about the Lord's life as he lived here on this earth and what he did. And I want to talk about six things that the Lord did prior to the grand finale. And I title this the greatest story that love has ever told. First thing, Jesus healed the sick. He healed the lover in Matthew 8, verse 1 through 4. When Jesus came down from the mountain, large crowds followed him. And a leper came to him and bowed before him and said, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing, be cleansed. And immediately the leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus said to him, see that you tell no one, but go, show yourself to the priest and present the offering that Moses commanded as a testimony to them. Jesus healed the sick. Secondly, Jesus liberated the oppressed. Jesus freed people from social injustice, prejudice, and demonic powers. Let's look at Luke 7, 36. Now one of the Pharisees requested him to dine with him, and he entered the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. And there's a woman in the city who was a sinner. And when she learned he was reclining at the table in the Pharisee's house, she brought an alabaster vial of perfume. And standing behind him at his feet, weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears and kept wiping them with the hair of her head and kissing his feet and anointing them with a perfume. Now when the Pharisee who had invited him saw that he said to himself, if this man were a prophet, he would know who and what sort of person this woman is who is touching him, that she is a sinner. Jesus didn't see that. He saw this woman showing the care for him. They did not look, they looked down on women back then. They heard Jesus raising this woman up. Also, let's look at the parable of the two debtors. If you go with me to uh, go with me to the next chapter, we'll read here in, in Luke. Um, do I have it right here? Yes, go with me to um, go for a passage. It's the parable of the two debtors. I'll read here. And Jesus said, answered him, saying, Simon, I have something to say to you. And he replied, Say it, teacher. A money lender who had two debtors owed one 500 denarii and the other 50. When they were unable to repay, he grossly forgave them. So which of them would love them more? Simon answered and said, I suppose that the one he forgave more. And he said to him, you have judged correctly. Turning toward a woman, he said to Simon, do you see this woman? I entered her, your house. You gave me no water for my feet, but she has wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You gave me no kiss. But since the time I came in has not ceased to kiss my feet. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she anointed my feet with perfume. For this reason I say to you, her sins, which are many, have been forgiven. For she loved much, but he who has forgiven little loves little. Then he said to her, your sins have been forgiven. Those who were kind to table with him began to say to themselves, who is this man who even forgives sins? And he said to a woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. He cared about this woman and the social injustice that was being done before her. Well, lastly, I'd like for us to look at the part in Luke chapter 10, beginning in verse uh, 38. Now, as they were traveling along, he entered a village, and a woman named Martha walked him into her home. She had a sister called Mary. She was seated at the Lord's feet, listening to his word. But Martha was distracted with all her preparations. And she came to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the serving alone? Then tell her to help me. 
But the Lord answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and bothered about so many things, but only one thing is necessary, for Mary has chosen the good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Here, worried about having the predominance and having, you know, having that, they are taking one, take the preeminence of that. And then let's also go, as we look at Luke chapter 4, as he deals with the demons, and Jesus liberated the demons. Luke chapter 4, beginning verse 33. And the Son of God, there was a man possessed by the spirit of an unclean demon, and he cried out with a loud voice, Let us alone. What business do you have with each other, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be quiet and come out of him. And when the demon had thrown him down and missed the people, he came out of him without doing any harm. Jesus liberated the oppressed. He freed the people from social injustice, prejudice, and the demonic people. The third thing is that Jesus showed compassion. Jesus showed compassion. John, verse 11, John chapter 10, John chapter 11, beginning verse 30. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still in the place where Martha met him. Then the Jews were with her in her house and consoling her when they saw that Mary got up quickly and went out. They followed her, supposing that she was going to the tomb to weep there. Therefore, when Mary came where Jesus was, she saw him and fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been in my brother, would it not have died? When Jesus therefore saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and was troubled and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. So the Jews were saying, see how he loved him. Jesus had compassion, and he wept over the death of Lazarus. The fourth thing that happened is Jesus, he was kind. Jesus was kind to everyone. As we saw um, in the story, as we know in the story with uh, Zacchaeus, when he was, when he was uh, traveling through the city and Zacchaeus was up in the tree and he was a short man and Jesus saw him and he says, come on down, wee little man, come on down because I want to go to your house today. And not only that, this man being a tax collector, probably not being favored, but Jesus, he was kind to everyone. It didn't matter if they were big or small, black or white, it didn't matter what color they are, he was kind to everyone. He was kind to everything. And also we can see that John, the, the fifth thing is that Jesus loved his disciples. A new command I give to you in John 13, verse 34, that you love one another even as I loved you, that you also love one another. By this all men will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Jesus loved the disciples, but he loved all of them. All of these things Jesus had, and you see a theme kind of run here where the love that Jesus had throughout all his people. And also that he set the example John 13, verse 12. So when he had washed their feet, this is Jesus, when he had washed their feet and taken his garments and reclined at the table again, he said to them, do you not know what I've done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I then, the Lord and the teacher, washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. Jesus showed his love again by washing the disciples' feet. And then we have what I call the grand finale that took place, which involved Jesus. And Jesus, in Matthew 26, verse 36, And Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane and said to his disciples, Sit here while I go there and pray. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is deeply grieved to the point of death. Remain here and keep watch with me. And he went a little beyond them and fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping and said to Peter, So you men could not keep watch with me for one hour? Keep watching and praying that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away a second time and prayed, saying, My father, if it cannot pass away unless I drink it, your will be done. Again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them again and went away and prayed a third time, saying the, saying the same thing once more. Then he came to his disciples and said to them, Are you sleeping and resting? 
Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Victory over death. Jesus was getting ready and knew his fate, but he knew he was going to have the victory because what because what was laid out before God in his plan. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And here is what is the grand finale for all of us in the Lord's death on the cross. O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory to our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your toll is not in vain in the Lord. Did you just hear it? The grand finale of the fireworks just went off. The fate had been sealed. Satan had been overcome. He had died on the cross for all of us. But not before, but before his death, Jesus showed his love to everybody, even though he knew that it was going to be time for him to die. So this morning, think about the love that Christ showed for all of us and the greatest love story we told, and he died on the cross, and that sin was overtaken by him dying on the cross. Mm-hmm.